church say amen. Amen. Exodus 33, we're going to read uh, verses 12 through 23. Amen. We'd like to subtopic this message today, getting to, getting to know God through His glory. Amen. We we're talking about our relationship, knowing God on a personal level, what He requires from us. And so uh, we're dealing with, is God rubbing off on you subtopically getting to know God through his glory? Amen. So Exodus 33, uh, we begin reading in verse number 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, see you, say to me, bring up this people, but you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Let me know your ways, that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Verse 15, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people. It is not by your going with us so that we, I and your people may be distinguished from all the other people who are upon the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this, of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass by before you. And will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face. For no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me. And you shall stand there on a rock, and it will come about while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I pass by. Verse number 23, then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face 
shall not be seen. I have read Exodus 33 verses 12 to 23. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most holy and righteous word. You may be seated in the presence of God. But we want to think from a thought or a topic, thought process that getting to know God through his glory. Uh, we started off this series in part one talking about is God rubbing off on you? Is, 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 is the attributes, is the thing that you're coming to learn and coming to know about God, is it uh, taking hold of your life? Are you who you say you are in essence? Uh, we run around and we 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 are we are constantly dro name dropping of who we are. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. We don't have no problem with telling people who we are, who we work for, who we stand for. But the question I'm asking you today is God rubbing off on you? And in answering that question today, I find myself really wanting to understand and recognize who God is. So in order to really know if God is rubbing off on you, you ought to have some of his attributes. Uh, you ought to want to pray for some folks sometimes. You ought to want to help somebody along the way. You, you ought to find yourself in his word. You ought to find yourself in prayer time. You ought to have some attributes of God. Uh, Jesus makes the statement in his word. He says, if you love me, there's something that you ought to do. He said, and what you ought to do is keep my commandments. In other words, God said, if you're in relationship with me and I'm rubbing off on you, there's some things that I require you to do. Amen. And so, and so I felt like that. If we could just uh, get to know the supernatural being of God. You know, I ain't talking about what Grandmama used to say and Big Mama Nim used to say. I, I don't want you to know God through their eyes. I want you to know God for who he is. I want you to know God for what he's done. I want you to know him through his power. I want you to know God the Father, uh, which is the creator. I want you to know God the Son, which was the restorer, the redeemer, which re redeemed us back to God. And, and then I want you to know him through his Holy Spirit, the sustainer, the, the comforter, the one that will be with you to the very end. So God is, uh, so we need to get to know him. And to know God, you've got to know about his glory. <laughs> his, his glory is why I sing the songs of Zion. Uh, his glory is why I came into relationship with him. Uh, his glory is manifested in his nature. And in order to know God, you've got to know his nature. Amen. Because if you're not serving God through a right relationship or a true relationship, you are not serving the God of heaven, the God, the creator, the God, the sustainer of life. You are serving a superficial God. Amen. You got to know God for who he is. Amen. I, I, I can say over these past years in my marriage, getting to know my wife, We've come into a relationship that we've got to know each other. But we know each other's likes and dislikes. Uh, matter of fact, over the years, we've come to think alike. Amen. She can go to the store on the south side, and I can go on the north side. And when we come home, we got the same groceries. We, we've gotten to know each other. Amen. And so what God has declared for the people of God to do, he said, he said get to know me. And I will get to know you. Even though I've created you from the foundation of the world, you got to know him. Amen. And so to know God is to know him in his nature. And when I talk about the glory of God, I mean the, uh, uh, the composite nature of God. The comprehensive grouping of all that makes him who he is. Which makes him the S-O-N and not the S-U-N. Amen. We, 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 can, we can relate to God in his glory just as we relate to the sun. Amen. On a bright sunny day, amen, when the sun is at its peak and it's giving off its, its luster of being, amen, we, most of us get out sunglasses. 
Amen. When we're driving in a car, we put down a little shade. The shade. Look, the, the glory of God is like the S U N, but it encompasses the S O N. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. See, the sun S U N can only shine by day. Amen. But the S O N, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The glory of God can show up. In a moment, and in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. As we, as we look at the text in verse 13, look what Moses says about the glory of God. He says, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, God, let me know your ways that I might know you. Moses' desire was to know God intimately. Because when Moses understood that if I knew God from head to toe, I could then replicate him in my Christ-like type of life. Amen. I don't know about you. You know, there, there's some good preachers out there. When I, when I was a young preacher, can I be honest with you? I would hear preachers on the TV and hear them on the radio. And as a young preacher, I was still trying to find myself. And so I would, I would try to emulate some preachers that I thought, amen, that, 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 that delivered a dynamic word. Amen. I had some that, that like to get into a hum, so I try to, mm, ha, like they hum. And, and then I tried to be didactic, like some of TV channel. I wanted to be didactic, and I wanted to be dynamic, and I wanted to expound on the word like some great preachers. But what I found out is none of that had power without the SOE. Amen. God called me to be a pastor Simmons. And that's the only person I know how to be. You know, there's some great preachers, but he called Tony Evans to be Tony Evans. He called, he called Dr. Jakes to be Dr. Jakes. He called Pastor Moore to be Pastor Moore, but he's called me to be who I am. And, and so God said, in order to be who you are, you got to know my glory. Moses is saying what he simply said. He said, he says, God, I understand who I am. Know who my parents are. Know who I'm a descendant of. And he said, now that I'm a child of the king, he said, God, let me get to know you. Let me get to know your glory. Because it's your glory that's going to cause me to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Moses said, if you, if, if you want me to know you, God, you must, I must know his ways. You, you must say to him, help me to know who you are. Notice in verse 14, uh, the Lord begins to answer Moses. He says, in other words, don't worry about it. He said, I will be with you and you will see me do my thing. Amen. He, he, he responded to Moses to the fact that I may not come when you want me. Somebody know what I'm talking about. But he's always on time. Amen. I don't, I, I, I have to be honest, Brother Wilson. I, I, I I don't know if I can stand the glory of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I, I wouldn't know how to hold my peace. My tear ducts would dry up if the glory of God was, but God said, I will show up. And when I show up, you'll know that I'm there because I'm going to show up. You got to know God according to his nature. Then Moses makes a second request. In verse 15, look what Moses says. He says, if your presence does not go with me, do not lead us out of this place. Some of y'all ought to pray like Moses prayed. Amen. We, we head off into dangerous territory. We head off into the enemy's camp. Amen. We haven't even consulted or asked the Lord to go with us. Amen. I wouldn't dare leave my house 
I wouldn't dare. We not. Let me tell y'all how church folk is. Amen. We 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 want folk to think God is with us. We we look. We 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 put on all kind of braces. WWJD. We we wear that on a bracelet. Amen. We we got license plates on the front of our car. Jesus is my co-pilot. But I argue with you today that, that folk who put a plate on their car to talk about Jesus is co anything. They don't know the divine glory of God. Amen. I want Jesus to drive and I just want to ride. Amen. Because I understand who the head of my life is. If God is not the head, amen, of your life, you are serving a fictitious, unpowerful God. Look at, look, look, look at what he asked him. The second thing, he said, God, okay, I understand. I understand in verse 13 and 14 that you're going to with, gonna go with me and that you're going to show up and I'm going to allow to see your glory. But then he says, if, if your presence does not go, amen, I don't know about you, I don't want to be places where God don't want me. Amen. You can look high and you can look low. But if it ain't where God wants you, I don't want to be there. Amen. I'm just keeping it real. Amen. God has planted your feet in where he wanted you to go. Amen. Well, look what Moses says. Moses, uh, no, we talk about Moses. Anybody know the story of Moses? We, we, we know Mo Moses, when he came out from Israel, Moses stretched out the rod. That's the Moses I'm talking about. Amen. And God commanded the seas to fall in half. Moses, Moses could have been, Moses was full of him. This is after that. But Moses still understands that he cannot do nothing without God. He said, Lord, wherever I go, if you're not going, I don't want to go there. So look what God says. He says, he says, he says, Lord, in verse 15, he says, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up there. He says, Moses is saying, if, if you don't go before me, Lord, if you haven't prepared the ground, if you haven't set the table, if you haven't fertilized the grass, if you haven't fertilized, fertilized the garden, if you haven't prepared, Lord, let me not go there. Let me not see the promised land. I wonder, or, or rather stay here in the wilderness. Moses just said, he said, I'd rather be in the middle of nowhere with nothing with you than to be in the middle of somewhere that didn't have you. See, too many of us want to be somewhere where there's everything but God, but instead of nowhere, amen, that it encompasses his glory, that encompasses his power. I don't know about you, I'd rather be broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen. Driving a hoopty, a pinto by 10 speed, driving with some shoes with holes in them with God. Right. Then to have a Bentley, living up in Carmel or Geist, have everything the world has to offer. The Bible says it this way. This is what he said. He said, what is it that a man profit the whole world but lose his soul? Amen. My, my, I, I, I boast in the Lord. I glorify in the Lord. I am somebody because God is somebody. Look what, look what God responds to Moses. Look what he says. I need my time. Look what he says. He says, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken. For you have found favor in my sight. And I have known your name. Now what God is simply telling them, look, it's not for what Moses is doing right now. It's what Moses had planned. It is what Moses has fertilized in the name of the Lord. He said, Moses, he said, you have favor because when I call you, you show up. When I tell you to go, you go. When I tell you to be a base, you are base. And when I tell you to abound, to bust out, to be on top, you are, Moses, you have listened to me. And not only that, Moses, I know you by name. I, I know the works of your hands. I know your mission.
ministry. I know how you have served. God knew Moses, and he said, because of that, Moses, look, some of us can't get, some of us can't pray a rock across the street. Amen. Why? Because we don't have relationship with God. God talking about, remember, remember, remember when the, the devil showed up and they had whooped, and he said, they, and then they tried to come behind him, he said, and they tried to speak word, and he said, and the devil looked at him, he said, I know Moses, I know Paul, but who are you? They, 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 they had sense enough to know we're going to whoop you right back on across the street. <laughs> Amen. Reminds me of a story. I moved into my neighborhood, it was a little U, and, and it's called Central Court. Amen. And on this you, all of the families knew each other. We, we worked together in the blizzard of 77 and all of that, so we knew each other. But there was a new guy that moved in the neighborhood, and he didn't know nobody. So he saw Daryl beat up Terry. And so he came outside laughing that Daryl had beat up Terry. And I can imagine Terry was having the same thought process. He said, I know Daryl. I know the Joneses, and I know the singers, but who are you to come out here and laugh? And you just moved into the neighborhood. And the dude got smart with Terry, and Terry whooped him upside the head. <laughs> See, when you don't know who you messing with, amen, you might have been tough on your block. But now that you're on a new block, you better get to know the block. Amen. And what God is simply telling you, you done left the block of sin and fornication. Amen. You might have been somebody on the block. You might have been the big head honcho dope dealer. You might have been the big head honcho basketball player on your block, but you on a new block now. Amen. Can't you imagine Goliath? Goliath was the man on his block. Amen. He was a champion. Amen. Not only was he a champion, he came from a champion bloodline. But Goliath got off his block. Ran into a little bitty boy named David with five smooth stones. I, what you telling me, Pastor? In order, if you have the glory of God and you and you five foot ninety eight pounds, you can do something when you know who you're battling for. Amen. David cleaned up the block. <laughs> Amen. To the point that even the folk that was on it, they was like, go oh, ahead, David. You go, boy. We gonna watch. We got you back here. And back in the day, we say, way back here. You go down in the valley and face that seven footer. But they didn't know that David knew God. But most of all, God knew David. And he told David, he said, he prophesied out there, he said, not only are you gonna whoop him, you're gonna cut his head off. Amen. When you go in the power and the authority of God, somebody said in the word that there's no weapon that will form against me shall prosper. But many of us don't go in the name of the Lord. Amen. But when you go in this, when you go in, when you know his nature and you know something about his history, amen, then you can go in authority to see God. Amen. Amen. And so, Jesus responded, he said, because I know you. God responded, he said, I know you. I know, I know you. Well, he, said, he said, I'm going to grant you this in which you've asked me to do. Then there was a third thing in the text that Moses asked for. Look, look at this little bitty space. Moses got some sense, y'all. He got sense enough, enough to know that I'm going to be in a position to be successful. So he, he's having dialogue with God. Some, some of y'all didn't know you can have dialogue, conversation, get direction with God. Amen. I, 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 I love my wife's opinion. But if it's not my seal by God's opinion, I got to follow God. And I, and I pray, and I know she's the same way. Honey, I, that's cool. I hear you. I know you're my pastor and everything. But I ain't doing nothing until God put the seal on me. I don't want y'all to do nothing pastor say till you pray about it. Do you seek God's face and let him say the same thing to you? But understand position. Pastor is the visionary. Pray about the vision. Support the vision. Support the ministry. Amen. But get confirmation from God. Amen. Say like this. Not thy will. Not my will. But thine will. Be done. 
in the model prayer. Amen. Amen. To know God, to know God is to know his manifest that he's manifested in history. Amen. We we we, we know God's voice by what he has done in the past. We, we've seen him show up in other folks' lives. Amen. We saw him a move in a lion's den. Amen for Daniel. That's, that's history. Amen. We saw him move in Job. Amen. When Job was vexed with swords and all his, his friends. And we, we, we see the history of God in the story of Job. Not only that, we see him in the history of Hebrew boys who were left to be burned up in a furnace. God showed up. We see his glory. We saw his power. We saw the manifestation of his spirit. How do we know that? Because the statement in Job says, did not we put in three? He said, but I see four. And notice nobody had never seen God, but they had revelation to say, the fourth one looks like the son of God. Now notice that Jesus said in the text, ain't nobody never, that God said nobody has never seen him. Here they already prophesied Amen. That the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Amen. That, that's knowing his glory. That's knowing the manifestation of his power. That's knowing the benefits of his creation. Then, God reveals himself in the temple. Later, Israel built a permanent residence for, for the glory of God called the temple. Amen. We built the house of God. We set aside places to come and worship. Now, I know y'all. Some of y'all have built some nice houses. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all have built them from the ground up. Nobody never lived in them. They ain't walked on the carpet. Amen. They ain't turned. That is your house. Nobody lived there before you, and you have aspirations of nobody living there until you dead God. That's it. That's Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. You have great aspirations, but but the temple of God. You have not set your house aside as the temple of God, and so we have church. Amen. Because you let some stuff go on in your house that's not of God. Amen. I'm guilty. I've been there and done that. Amen. I set myself aside for Satan, boy. I'm going to tell you, it went down. D D O O O W W W N N N. It went down in my house when I was in the world. But the same thing is going down in my house that now that I'm out of the world that goes down with Christ. Amen. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And so we build, we, we're building temples, we're building even greater temples today. Amen. Uh, men's architecture, minds and thought processes is elevating temples beyond what we ever thought could be done in the house of God. So we, God has re been revealed and been set aside for the temple. Uh, we know even prior to us uh, getting in position uh, to come out of the, inner, the outer courts to the sanctuary, there was a transformation, amen, that we no longer have to offer up to the priest, the high priest, to go pray for us, to do certain things. God came that the veil was rent, that we could come from the outer courts to the inner courts. And we didn't have to stop there. He went so far that we can go to the holies of holies. The, the temple is prepared. The table is set. Amen. For us to get to know God. God reveals himself not only as God, he revealed himself as Christ. Uh, the prophecy that Jesus would come and and that he would hang on the cross and that he would die for the remission of sin. But on the third day, he would rise with all power of heaven. But God came, he came to reveal himself as Christ. He stepped out of immortality to mortality. He took on uh, 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 the transfiguration of a man, amen. He became flesh, amen. And, and, and he was born of a woman just like you and I. Amen. But he went to a cross and he died. So we know that God has revealed himself. Amen. As, as Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. Amen. And then we know uh, that God 
has revealed himself in the church today. God has not only manifested his glory in nature, not only has he manifested himself in the tabernacle, and not only has he manifested himself in the temple, he has also manifested himself as Christ. But he's also manifested himself in the church. Now, to him whom is able for more abundantly beyond all that we could ask or think according to the power that working within us to him be the glory and majesty in the church according to Ephesians 3.20. God said not only am I going to reveal myself in all of these ways, he says I have to reveal myself to the church. Why? Because the church in order to function according to my word, the church has to understand the power and the glory of God. I understand that I cannot operate without him. I understand that I cannot heal anybody without the power of God. God's glory and all of that, you guys, I, I just want you to know that God's glory demands a response from you. You can't receive all of these things that we've talked about and think that you don't have to respond in any way, shape, or form. Amen. That, that's what's wrong with the world today. Too many of us say, well, I can be saved uh, from my couch. Ain't too many folk getting saved from stay home Baptist. <laughs> Amen. That's a nice church. I heard it was, I know your, your church is a clean church. Amen. I, I know your, your stay home Baptist church has plus furniture. Amen. It ain't none of that. Uh, you ain't getting your stuff from uh, Value City Furniture. You have went and got the best stay home Baptist couch in the city. Amen. But I stopped by to tell you today that your stay home Baptist couch ain't going to last. There ain't no power. You might find some change in there when you broke sometime. Amen. You might find a piece of gum that might have fell out your pocket that might feed you when you're hungry. Amen. But it will not last. I want to introduce you to a God that will last, that will reach to the highest mountain. He says, if you go to the highest mountain, I am there. He's the same God that when you go to the deepest valley, he said, when you're in trouble in the valley and your money's funny and your change is strange, he said, I am there. He said, if you raise, make your bed in hell, I don't know about y'all, but this is a powerful man of God. He said, if you make your bed in hell, he said, I will be there. But I'm so glad today, amen, that he's a God who demands a response. Only two groups of beings won't voluntarily glorify God. The fallen men and the fallen angels. Both will be discarded from his presence because throughout all eternity, God will only fellowship with those who have fellowship. You see, your claim to the esteem God will be validated by how you respond to the God you say you esteem. The proof that you glorify God, that you recognize his intrinsic value, will be the value that you ascribe to his glory. And if you become a child of the king, uh, you must know the very essence of who God is. You must understand the very power that he possesses. If you are to respond to God, you have to sing to him like Psalm 96 says. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lamb, bless his name, proclaim the good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations. Ascribe to the Lord of families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord's glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. 
Worship the Lord in his holy attire. If you know the Lord and you are responding to his power and you are responding to his glory, uh, you ought to have some attributes of God in getting to know his glory and getting to respond to God. You got to praise him. Amen. You got to praise God. The Bible says that all of creation resonates within the glory of God's ex except people. God's demands and deserves glory. We can't give him glory because he already has it. Understand God is God with or without your glory. Amen. Too many of us think God needs us. But God's going to be God whether you're with him or against him. Amen. Amen. God is not powerful because you got power. Amen. God is not a healer because you know how to heal. In spite of you, God is all powerful. In spite of you, God is a healer. God tells us to praise him with our whole heart. Praise him as we read in Psalms 150 on the hot sounding symbols. He said, but everything that has breath, praise you, Lord. Amen. When you respond to the call of God's glory, you ought to have attributes just like God. And when you're responding, to God, God requires you to glorify him. One, G one day Jesus came upon ten lepers who cried out, have mercy on us, Lord. You'll find this in Luke 17. The Lord had pity upon them and said, go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, their skin became like baby skin. The leprosy was gone. Nine of the lepers kept going, but one, one, amen, foreigner, a Samaritan, turned around and came back and fell on his knees before Jesus and glorified him. I stopped by to tell you today that you need to quit walking around in this life thinking that you have raised yourself on your own bootstrap. It is because God that you live. It is because of God that you breathe. If God would take the air out of the earth, we would all God has called us to glorify him. The leopard asked a great question. He says, God asked the question. Even though, now this is God, he knows. He asked the leopard, he says, uh, huh, this is just like us though. This is like, we, we, we flock to a shooting. Amen, don't we? With something bad going on in the neighborhood, we in the window, pulling back the curtains, trying to see what had happened. But when God do something good for us, we don't get on the telephone, we don't get on the telegraph, we don't get on the cell phone, we don't get on Twitter or nothing else and tell nobody how good God been. We keep that to ourselves. But let something happen in the church. Girl, I was at church. It's on Twitter, Facebook, Netbook, all over the books of the books of the world, and we trying to tell somebody. We'll call Tennessee. We'll call Dallas. We'll call want to come on the evangelistic Saturday and go tell somebody in the neighborhood that God lives and he lives on the inside of me. Amen. I, I think we created social media so we can tell the bad news. Amen. I don't even watch the news because the news always talk about the bad stuff that happened. And I promise you there's more good stuff going on than the bad stuff. Amen. They pick and choose these few little bad things and then we tune in to see what's bad. Man, after the weather go off, I don't want no parts of the news. Amen. Because I know we got some good young folk. I, I, I know we got some folk that let their pants hang down and all of that. I know we got some young folk who smoke dope and do all of that. But this, every time you show me somebody that's bad, I can show you some good. 
But we only want to glorify the bad. Amen. What the amazing thing, I know the amazing thing about this thing here is, what amazes me, Sister Mom, is that the kids emulate the rappers. But get the rappers off camera, and they look like they got some sense. They living in a nice house. You go by their house, their pants ain't hanging down. Hey Amen. It's the image that they have to be to be a rapper. That ain't even their life. They rapping about somebody else's life. But we want to act like they are on TV and not like they are in real life. Them are, them are entrepreneurs. They're building businesses. Amen. Every rapper that has been, to my recollect, most rappers, let me say most because I can't say I don't know them. I don't really know them. But I tell you, I've never seen a, a, a dope dealer retire. Amen. I haven't seen him retire. He ain't got no retirement plan. He ain't got no medical benefits. Amen. They either end up dead or in jail. Amen. That's it. Amen. They ain't got no 401k plan. Amen. I, I can't, this is a tell the truth, church, right? Amen. They, they don't have none of the benefits of those who are walking circumspectly means right with God. 